So I am excited beyond excited. Let me tell you guys what is going on in this particular video. So it has been somewhere in the neighborhood of about 12 weeks waiting to get the engine out of the machine shop. Um, I used the machine shop that I normally don't use and it's not bad. It's just that they, you know, they, they took a while and in all fairness, they had a, one guy that got really sick and one guy that had a heart attack and, you know, they were down to two people from four and all those things, you know, that, you know, that slow things down. So anyways, uh, the heart attack guy's fine. The guy that was sick is back. Everybody's there and doing their job, I guess. So anyways, what that means for this video is, is that the heart for Bob is back it's here it's ready to be put together and I'm going to show you a few machinist things to look for um, some people will just rely on this information being correct uh, some people never check it and get away with it forever and ever and ever uh, but I'm going to show you the what I consider to be the right way to check things and uh, we'll kind of go from there all right, so first things first, we're going to check the connecting rods, uh, the big end of the connecting rods diameter this way. Um, so I've looked up the tolerance on these. They're supposed to be 2.2247 to 2.2252. So there's a half a thousandth tolerance in the diameter of the big end, which is kind of important. Um, once again, I haven't used this machine shop before, so I'm going to uh, check everything. I know that they didn't do anything to the rods, so we're just confirming that they're good out of the box. Um, so, first things first is you gotta standardize your mics. And these are actually really good ones. Um, these are probably some of the best that you can buy. These are Michitoyo mics. And what I mean by standardize is you use this little doodad here, which is called a standard. And you check it. Let's see if I can show you this in the camera. Let's try it this way. I bet this works. All right. So right now I'm not using the, the ratcheting part of the thimble. Let's see here. This is real hard to do out in the open like this without any kind of... Normally you have a little vice thing that holds the mics for you. Okay, so I've standardized these. You hear it clicking. If you look at the measurement there, the light's kind of dim. But that is within, I don't know, a tenth or so of being perfect actually less than a tenth if you can see those marks yeah there you go you can see it so the, it's almost right on zero all right so we know the mics are good so now we're going to set the dial board gauge where it zeros on 2.225 so what i mean by zero is i've already put the ambles 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 in place uh, to measure the rods, um, and I know that they're right because I already checked it, but what the idea here, the easiest way to do this is to make it where the dial reads zero when it's 2.225. So I'm going to take this thing over to the vise uh, and set this in the vise so we can get a good look at that. Okay, so what we're trying to do here, I got the, the OD mics are set on 2.225. They've been standardized. So what we're trying to do is get this dial bore gauge to read zero when it is set at 2.225. Now I think you can see the needle in the camera there. Maybe not exactly what it says, but it doesn't move as I move the dial bore gauge around. And it's kind of finicky. You gotta get a kind of get a feel for it. But that's pretty stinking good. That's right on the money. 
So this thing, the way this is marked is, that's 1,000, so 0 .001. Every mark on here between, between zero and one is 0 .0001. So, according to our tolerance, we can be three marks before it or two marks after the zero on the rods. Okay, the first one is about two tenths over. So that's going to be 4.2252 on the first one. Now we're not going to go through all eight of the rods. Um, but what I'll do is I'll write the measurements down with a Sharpie just, just in case. And then if anything's weird, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so the cool part is, is every single one of the rods checked exactly the same. Uh, they all checked at 4.2251, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, that's good. That's really good. For any one of those, anybody that was wondering on the K1 rods, I think you can see that right there in the camera. Uh, K1 rods for the LS motor, right out of the box, check really good. So that's definitely a step in the right direction. Now, since we have the, uh, the OD mics, the two to three OD mics already standardized, we're gonna pull the crank out of the box right here and we're gonna check that next. All right, time to check the crankshaft. Again, we know we've already standardized this. So we can just go on about our way, see what she looks like. 2.099 to 2.100 is what it's supposed to be. We are at 2.0995. 2.0995, we'll check it across. Okay, so the mains had a little bit more uh, variance to them. They went, the tolerance is 2.558 to 2.559. And I had anywhere from 2.5584 to 2.5589, so half a thousandths variance between all five mains. It's not that bad. Um, we'll set the bearings in there and try to uh, arrange them in a manner where the clearance uh, is similar or the same across all five. So not a big deal. Now let's move on to checking the piston skirts and see what size they are. All right, we're changing mics now. It's time to check the skirts on the piston, see what size they are. And We'll go from there. So we got to standardize the mics. These are the three to four. <laughs> so I need to move these a little bit. All right, we got it set good. Let us check in the pistons. All right. Now, first off, this is a cheap motor, if you will. I don't know. I mean, cheap is relative to who's paying for it, I guess. But this is the Summit Pro LS Pistons K1 Rod Summit Crank, which is K1. Um, we're just double checking everybody's work. That's all it is. Okay, so we're 3.808. This is a 30 over 5.3, so it should be, the, the bore size is 3.810. It's actually gonna be a little bigger, but. I think 3.8075 for piston number one. All right, I'm gonna check all these, I'll report back. Okay, well so far the, uh, the Summit Pro LS pistons, <clears throat> presumably made by Wiseco, <coughs> excuse me, are, uh, they're really good as far as tolerances are concerned. Uh, the pistons themselves measured from 3.8077 to 3.8076 on all eight of them. So there was a tenth of a thousandth of variance in all eight pistons on the skirts. So that's big, or, you know, good. Um, now is the real test to check the work of the machine shop on the block with the dial bore gauge. All right, so after checking the block, the block measures, uh, the cylinders particularly, 
measure um, the worst one is 3.8113 and the worst one the biggest one is 3.8121 so uh, we have three about three and eight tenths three thousandths and eight tenths clearance which is uh, pretty good you know the, the recommendations from the manufacturer said they need to be about four thousandths so I think that'll be okay it's time to move on to the next step um, we got everything checked as far as measurements are concerned so we'll move forward it all checks good um, I think probably need to clean the block real good they they use one of those uh, steam clean cabinets where the the block sits in it and turns and it's it's okay but it's not as clean as it could be on the outside at least so i think i'm gonna get some of that etching wheel cleaner that they use since it's an aluminum block and i'm gonna uh, etch the block and power wash it and i'll chase all the holes and stuff first and then power wash it so it'll, it'll be nice and clean when it's time to put it together but outside of that i think we are ready to move forward though okay one more thing to keep in mind um the cylinder distortion or variance is is normal um when it's measured like that because the cylinders are normally honed with a deck plate in place and when you take the deck plate off the cylinders distort back to their um no load state if you will so when you put the cylinder head on ideally in a perfect world it will go back to being round or very close to being round so uh, not all necessarily a bad deal um, i think it's probably pretty good actually so let's get started on measuring the mains and checking and see how they look okay so here's reason number one that you check everybody's work um i think you can see it in the camera let me turn this a little bit uh you can't see the numbers but this is the number three cap this is the number two cap and they're obviously in the wrong place this being the front of the motor um, if you look a little closer you can see the thrust surface of the cap uh, where the the counterbore where the thrust bearing sits doesn't match the block down here and it's you know of course it should be back here um, what i just now noticed is that all the nuts and fasteners and things are loose so hopefully um, they just switch the caps around when they pulled the block off the machine or for cleaning or, or whatever the case may be but we're gonna find out we're gonna torque everything down and check it all right so interesting note here um, I measured the main bores without the bearings and then I measured the main bores with the bearings and the main bores get uh, sloppier towards the rear of the engine which is you know normal I suppose uh, considering how mains are honed now i bought the king uh xp bearings which are one thousandths oversize for the mains uh not on purpose but it actually ended up being a good thing um considering what they're used for or what they're designed for so when i put the bearings in the block and measured the bearings um i had tolerances all over the place ranging from two and a half to three point nine thousandths or zero zero three nine um that's acceptable but it's not optimal um so what i ended up having to do is actually take the main bearings back out of the block and switch them around and put the biggest bearings in the smallest bores and the smallest bearings in the biggest bores to get the tolerances to level out uh where they're closer together and there's not as much variance front to back again i i personally think it would have been just fine um i i mean lord knows i've put way worse together and had no trouble so point being is is this engine's going to get a really extreme beating and i want to give it every opportunity that i can to make sure that it's right um so if you're doing something similar you, well first off if you're even if you're putting a stock engine together you can't go wrong checking measurements and, and all those things um, my recommendation would be to not trust plastic gauge if at all possible and to use dial board gauges whenever possible so anyways uh, this video is probably getting pretty long but that's that's what I would consider to be the right way to check bearing clearances cylinder clearances so on and so forth um, with your hot rod short block so 
Anyways, um, probably a good place to end the video because, it, like I said, it is getting kind of long. Um, I appreciate everybody stopping by to check it out. And if you haven't, subscribe and check us out on Instagram. So thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video.